Um, Sam, let, let's start with a guy, though, at number five on PFF's list that actually isn't on Bucky Brooks's top five in a kid out of Arkansas who's pretty talented, was an all-conference player in Traylon Burks. Yeah, the one real difference from our list and Bucky's list. Um, Traylon Burks is a bit of an enigma. They, they used him at Arkansas kind of as just this gadget player and a, an athlete and somebody to just get the ball in his hands as much as possible. He, he lined up at least one snap everywhere on offense except the offensive line, whether it was out wide, in the slot, in the backfield, a tight end, even a quarterback. And they just gave him the ball and let him go to work. And he dominated the competition. Uh, 42 explosive plays the last couple of years. The question marks are, how does that fit in an NFL offense in a more conventional role where he has to be a true wide out? You know, the combine numbers, the workout wasn't amazing, but he is a special playmaker. One other name that's out there. In fact, it's it's two guys on the same roster, Wilson and Olave. We'll start with Olave here. Kind of crazy when you think about all the firepower. It makes sense in why that team was able to get to a Rose Bowl and win that game, although both of those guys didn't play. But what, what do you guys like about Olave? Yeah, Olave is just such a smooth operator. Um, everything he does looks effortless. It looks just simple, easy, cool, calm, and collected. He's a great route runner because of all that. He's also surprisingly good after the catch that same kind of ease of movement translates with the ball in his hands and he's able to make guys miss as well uh, you watch him play and it just looks effortless and that's the kind of thing that translates at the very minimum to being successful at the nfl level you see these guys that are great route runners and they work at the nfl Sam, yesterday we had Peter Schrager on from Good Morning Football. He released his first mock draft. The first wide receiver he had taken off the board was Jamison Williams, and that was a player that was going to the Jets. Kind of surprised a group of us that that was the first name for him. You guys like him, too. You have him slotted as the third best wide receiver. Yeah, and you can see why. I mean, speed kills at the NFL level. It has done for decades. It still does. And Jamison Williams has rare acceleration. That kind of second level where he's just going through the gears and working his way up to top speed, he absolutely flies past guys when he gets to that level. And that's rare. You're not going to find that in any given draft class. And those guys that you do find with that skill set, they tend to go high in the draft. So he averaged 20 yards a catch last year, half of which came after the catch, you know, with the ball in his hands when he's already up to top speed and just flying into space. I'll take a little yak. Uh, I'm sure whatever team that he ends up in will take the same. You loved up Alave. His teammate in Garrett Wilson is ahead of him. What separates those guys? Not a whole lot. I think Garrett Wilson is just good at everything. He's a little bit better in a couple of areas than Alave, a little bit better at the catch point. Um, reminds me a little bit of Stefan Diggs in terms of a guy that, you know, doesn't really look like he should be dominant at the catch point and a, a sort of physical specimen, but he's able to go up and win these contested catches or high point the football in the end zone, the kind of thing that you need from a number one wide receiver. And, you know, he's just great at everything. For his entire college career, passes sent in his direction generated a pass rating of 140. You know, a perfect pass rating, 158.3. So a standard pass headed towards Wilson is almost perfect. Okay, number one on the list, Drake London. Missed some time, fractured ankle. He was so good in the Pac-12 that even with the four games that he missed, he was still the offensive player of the year. Every 50-50 ball, I swear, it's like 80-20 because he always seems like he comes down with it. You have him as number one despite that ankle injury. Why? You're right. I mean, you said it, contested catches, right? He led the nation last season in contested catches despite missing those games. Had 19 of them for his entire college career. He caught almost 60% of contested targets thrown his way. That's a huge number. If you're recording 60% every year in the NFL, you're basically the, the best contested catch receiver in the league. And, you know, the difference between him and some other contested catch guys in recent years is I think he does get open. He works better. Uh, in some space. He's able to show a little bit with his route running and, and work after the catch. And he isn't just a contested catch guy, but that is what separates him and gives the poten him the potential to be special. It's not a, not a small dude either. I mean, I saw him just no. light up just some smaller corners. My God, man, he is a physical specimen. Uh, can't wait to see where he ends up come the draft, which is just 20 days away. Sam, I know you guys are keeping busy at PFF, so appreciate the insight and the time. Anytime. Thanks for having me on.